welcome to Living One. My name is Olivia Crossman. I'm your host. Living One is a monthly webinar series in which presenters from around the world share their vision for a future where all Earth beings live as one community in peace, dignity, and freedom. We ask the question, we know what's wrong, but what does right look like? This last fall marked the beginning of Living One's fourth year, but today these conversations are more important than ever, for they are more than conversations. They are opportunities to build community, solve for the isolating wounds of our time. Today, we have the fifth session of our spring series, Earth Restoration and the Evolution of Human Consciousness. This series will explore the widespread calls to restore nature who has suffered so egregiously over the past 500 years from colonizing human appropriation, destruction, and overpopulation. In light of recognition by many indigenous humans and Western science of animal and earth sentience, nature's restoration takes on a broader and deeper meaning. Over the next two weeks, we will hear the perspectives of three individuals who have dedicated their lives to earth restoration and expanding human consciousness. We are delighted to have you join us as we explore this important topic together. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are all currently on various different indigenous lands. I am currently on the ancestral homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, which includes the Ojibwa, Ottawa, Potawatomi. This land also exists as a place of trade with other indigenous communities, including the Ho-Chunk, Miami, Menominee, Sauk, and Meskwaki. The Krulo Center for Nonviolence, located in Southern Oregon, is also the homelands of the Grizzly Bear, Takelma, Daku Betate, Coyote, Coho Salmon, Golden Eagle, and Gray Wolf. To recognize the land is to recognize the lasting effects of colonization, genocide, and oppression that still impact indigenous communities today, but it is also an expression of gratitude and appreciation for the land and for all those whose homelands we live and work on. In the fifth of this six-part series, we welcome P. Horsley. P. is the UK's most highly regarded animal communication specialist. Sowing the seeds of profound transformation, her goal is to deepen our personal and spiritual understanding of the natural world rewilding our connection along the way by offering grounded, practical, and compassionate teachings to everyone from complete beginners and those with more developed intuitive skills. She is the founder of Animal Thoughts and co-creator of The Pride, Animal Wisdom Membership, a community for people to engage in deep, profound, and healing heart-to-heart -heart communications with species who step forward to be heard in a timely fashion with the elevation of consciousness on Mother Earth. P supports people on their animal communication journey with the online course, Animal Communication Made Easy, three best-selling books, Heart to Heart, The Animal Communicator's Guide Through Life, Loss and Love, and Animal Communication Made Easy, as well as a TED Talk on interspecies connection, mentoring and in-person or online events and workshops. P created the Conversations with Nature World Summit in answer to the animal's request an annual biannual online event bringing together 24 inspiring speakers sharing interspecies communication, ecolo ecological wisdom, cosmic consciousness, and sacred activism. Now in its third year, this is a free online event for animal lovers and nature appreciators and those seeking to revitalize their relationship with the natural world. P's ethical wild animal communication retreats held around the globe our hard adventures into the deepest aspects of animal wisdom, love, and transformation. P was also nominated for the Woman of Peace Award in 2022. Before we begin, let me share a few logistical notes. P will be speaking for roughly 45 minutes, after which we will have 15 minutes for a question and answer. In order to proceed in a timely manner, we ask that you please send your questions along in the chat during P's presentation, and we will read them out after she is finished. For anyone who isn't familiar with the Zoom chat function, if you move your cursor towards the bottom of your screen, you will see a number of icons appear, one of which is the chat function towards the center left of your screen. If you click on that, the chat will appear where you can type any questions or comments as we go. We have two members of our Krulos community here with us today, Jenny and Diksha, who will be monitoring the chat throughout our time together. Also, please note that this Zoom session will be recorded, so if you would feel more comfortable leaving your camera off or changing your Zoom name, Zoom name, please feel free to do so. Finally, we ask that unless you are currently speaking, you keep your microphone muted to avoid any unintended interruptions. So without further ado, we welcome P. Horsley. Thank you, Olivia, so much. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. 
And thank you everyone for, for coming to, to listen and be part of this sharing together and for everyone also listening to the replays. Thank you. Um, would you like to start us off before we dive into the questions today? I would, if that's okay. So thank you. So everyone, I'd just like to, to bring us into a soft heart space and to bring us together as a community in a circle of equal beings. And also to invite the animals to join us. So I invite you now to have your feet on the floor, relax your hands in your lap, however that feels most comfortable for you, and to rest your eyes, close your eyes, and take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Breathe in deeply again. And deeply exhale. And again, breathing in deeply. And exhale. And keep breathing now to your own natural rhythm. And just being aware as you breathe, if you're holding any tension in your body, breathe into those areas to relax those areas. So every breath in, Breathing in love, every breath out, relaxing deeper. And bring your attention down to the soles of your feet, reminding of the beautiful connection with Mother Earth. through the soles of your feet, have the intention of a light reaching down into the very center of earth, anchoring you, grounding you, and then this light also comes up through the soles of your feet, through your body, up to the top of your head and then out through the top of your head into the sky, anchoring you with the sky, reminding you of your connection with the elements of the natural world. And then bring your attention to your heart. Perhaps you may like to just place your left hand over your heart. Bring your attention to breathing into your heart. And out of your heart. Breathing into your heart space and then out through your heart space. And as you continue to do this, think of an animal you love, in body or in spirit. Think of a species you love, a species of the land, of the water or the air, perhaps many different animals. And extend your love out to these animals that you're thinking of, trusting that your love reaches them 
and invite them now to join us in our circle. Your own animal friends, species you love or admire. Invite them now to come closer and closer. And if they wish to be with us for our sharing together. And as we sit in this circle, if you have an awareness of the animal or species, please acknowledge them and thank them for joining us. And breathing in deeply and breathing out deeply and gently opening your eyes. Thank you, everyone. If you are aware of the animal or species that have joined you and us in this circle, feel free to put it in the chat as well so that we can know who is with us in this energetic space. We have hummingbird and crow and horses and elephants, cat Haley, horses, penguins, swallows, blue whale. I felt the whale coming. Dolphins, your Labrador, bees, Varroa, hornets, deer, eagle, giraffe, pink dolphin, cat hawk, many different species. It's lovely. We're in fantastic company. We have beautiful humans here, and we have all of these amazing non-human animals also joining us. Lovely. And the worms. Let's not forget the worms. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much, P. What a wonderful way to begin our time together. That was wonderful. So to start off, would you like to tell us a little bit about your arc, how you got to where you are today? Okay. Um, where to start? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as a child, I was always a big fan of animals. Um I was very quiet. I was shy. I liked to sit on the farmer's fence and just talk to all the animals in the field and hear them back. And I didn't question it. And I was lucky enough to always have a cat in my life who I adored and felt very connected with. And, um, and that love of animals didn't go away, but I think it was sort of diminished by um, the school system and then, you know, peer, peer pressure essentially of what's acceptable. And I went into theatre as a stage manager and I did that for 15 years and I reached a point where I was, you know, nicely successful. I was working with people like Harold Pinter as my referee and... Um, and I always felt I'm not going to be doing this the rest of my life. There's, there's something else. I want to get back to my love of animals. And that's when I adopted my first dog, Morgan. And I call him my dog list because essentially I think when my heart was ready, when I was ready for this shift to get um, to, to discover my passion, essentially, and my vocation, Morgan turned up and he introduced me to animal communication, which is um, 19 years ago now and he became my guide and my support system for seven years teaching me a lot about um, animal communication how to um, get through my own stuff in order to be clearer as an animal communicator until he transitioned and then he carried on in his spirit body um, and also my cat Texas took over and in fact Texas is here and may have quite a lot to say at some point um, I feel that he he's here for a reason 
So I discovered animal communication um, in 2004 because of Morgan, essentially. When I adopted him, he was sad and I wanted to know why. And where I adopted him from, I was um, invited to an animal communication workshop. I thought that was the latest politically correct way of saying learn to read your dog's body language, mm. but discovered that actually it was more Dr. Doolittle. And I was so skeptical, you know, there are all these people sitting in a circle crying their eyes out. And I was sitting there going, oh, my God, you know, what's going on? <laughs> and I nearly walked out at lunchtime, but thankfully I didn't. And I had this communication experience with a rabbit. And then I went again. And on the second workshop, I literally woke up, you know, that awakening experience where I realized this is that thing that I wanted to move to. That, that wasn't dog walking, that wasn't cat sitting, that wasn't, you know, all those other fields that you can do when you're working with animals. It was something I hadn't even heard of. Mm -hmm. And then animal communication basically landed in my life with, with Morgan. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. What an incredible arc. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what animal communication means to you or what, what that phrase uh, means? Well, on a simple level, animal communication is, is communicating telepathically with non-human animals. That's mm. how we understand it. Um, but really, it's natural. You know, it's so natural. We are born with this ability to communicate with all of life, all of the natural world, because we as humans are nature. And what tends to happen is that there's a point in our lives where we, we forget that, you know, our focus is taken in, in a different way and um, we lose that connection. And, and it's kind of encouraged as well, this um, separation from nature. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the way I see animal communication is or interspecies communication, because, of course, we can communicate with plants and trees and rocks and, you know, elements and plant, uh, planets, stars. We can communicate with everything because everything is energy and that's essentially what it is. It's, it's communicating as one energetic being with another energetic being existence. Mm -hmm. And the way I've feel that it works is that you come from the heart you come with curiosity you come with reverence you come with deep respect and then surprise surprise other beings that you approach go oh you you seem like a really nice person yes i'll communicate with you and the communication flows mm. beautiful you mentioned that for you, you think it was starting education, which is where that rupture initially occurred with the connection. Would, In your experience, do you think that that's true for many people, just the way that the education system is um, set up, what you said about um, our, our connection to nature and that we lose it and have to come back to it? I think it's not just the education system. I think it's it's modern life. I think we're so focused on um, being consumers and seeking fast profit, uh, what John Perkins calls the death economy, is that we've forgotten the essence of living. And the essence of living is in connection, it's in communion, it's in community with all of life. And, and so I think that is, that is the problem, is that our... Uh, our perception of what life is, is very skew if, <laughs> you know, because it's not, it's kind of what we're told it should be rather than what it actually is. And you only have to um, connect with indigenous people and elders and uh, talk to them about life living as part of nature. And then you go, well, of course, that's, that makes sense, you know, and it's, we're in this, um, how do I say this, Texas? Okay. 
he said, you just say it. We're in this state of consciousness where we're kind of sleepwalking to the edge of the cliff and very soon we're going to just walk over it unless we open our eyes and act on our feelings. And I think it's really interesting at, the, at this moment uh, and in years prior, there's such a calling from the animal kingdom to connect with humans, to help humans learn who they are and that they are part of nature and that they are essentially kind, compassionate, loving beings. That's who we are as you know, homo sapiens. But a lot of that has been lost in the perception of what's presented to us in this death economy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And I imagine that informs uh, the title of your talk as animal communication as a way of life. Um, you know, our uh, living one focuses a lot on uh, we do know what's what's wrong, but what is right look like? And do you want to speak a little bit to animal communication as a way of life and what this this path could look like? Yes, thank you. So for me and, you know, a lot of animal communicators that are working professionally, um, we see a future. We have this vision where all human beings are communicating with animals and nature and, and that it is a way of life. It's not something external that we have to go and get you know it's not something that's given to us because we have it already you know we have this ability and and so I also hold this vision where every single person recognizes that they can easily communicate with animals but within their day-to-day when they walk out the door to go to work or they walk into their garden because they're working from home because everything's different now. <laughs> you know, they they can they can communicate with a butterfly that's just stopped to to have a little drink from a flower. They can communicate with the beetle that just walks across in their front of their path and and recognize the the robin that comes to say hello and just sit on the branch above them. And that that we are so awake with our connection with nature. Everything is brighter and more beautiful because it's every single day. It's not something that we go and do. You know, I'm going to sit down now. I'm going to communicate with my dog. It's it's constant. And what happens when we're in this way of being in, in connection with nature, mm-hmm. everything opens up. I mean, just everything opens up because then we realize we're in communication with this rock we're in communication with this tree and our perception of who we are on this planet and our our relationship with all that is completely shifts what what a beautiful image and vision for the future i i love that do you think that so from that perspective then this is something that anyone anyone and everyone is possible it's just about accessing accessing that ability yeah i think everybody has the potential to communicate um with animals interspecies communication um because it's really about coming from our heart and we're all we all have a heart um the hardest thing i think people find and i did at the beginning is is that discernment between am i making it up (laughs) is it really them you know is this really happening um, and then also the fear that comes from, I don't want to project, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I want to be authentic. I want to receive what it is this animal intends me to, to receive. And, and that comes with that discernment comes with practice. Mm-hmm. It's really like learning um, a language. You know, if I was to learn French, which I'm particularly bad at, um, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it fluently the first go. Mm-hmm. And animal communication is 
the same way, really, because we're remembering that we're remembering. I like to just think about it as being child, being like a child again. Um, that you know, it's like, whoa, look at this beetle and look at that butterfly, and everything's so exciting. And we come from this place of excitement and curiosity and deep respect. And then the ego and the mind don't have any space to, to come in because you're just so present with this animal that you want to communicate with mm-hmm. that, you know, everything else takes second, second seat. Beautiful. Is there a way for you that you've found to move beyond the ego in these spaces that was particularly effective when you were starting out or or even now say that again reword that again just so yeah when you mentioned the how when you're a child you are approaching this kind of communication and experience with just curiosity and and wonder and an open mind and then the ego comes in and I was wondering if there was a when you were starting out and you had the first experiences of is this real is this really happening like what am I experiencing if there was a way that you found to move beyond that if it's meditation or anything else that was effective in kind of not necessarily overcoming but moving moving through that process to be honest Olivia I think it was persistence I just refused to give up so um, I practiced a lot and I I did communications with people when I asked them to verify it, to give me feedback so that I could start to learn my personal rhythm of whether, you know, what felt right and what didn't feel right. And to recognize that inner voice in my head as whether that's me or whether that's, you know, Texas communicating with me. Um, And, and I just kept going. And I think, I think, the people that are successful at animal communications are those stubborn people like me that go, this means too much to me that I'm not going to give up on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And then it will click and it always clicks. Um, Sometimes it takes longer for some people. Sometimes it's really instant. Mm -hmm. Um, I also found that I, I felt drawn to, to take Reiki, to do Reiki. And I did my Reiki 1, 2, and Reiki Master. And I found that that was really beneficial at the beginning with just the opening up and starting to learn to tune into energy and connect with energy and what that felt like for me. Um, Some people will look at doing some kind of shaman course um, or psychic course. And it's really whatever you're drawn to in order to find a route in for yourself, where you can start to just open up and expand and expand and and let go of um, closed-minded thinking so that you're just really open to it Mm -hmm. and you just allow it to be. Um, I I honestly did not meditate very much. I don't meditate very much, um, which is probably shocking to some people. (laughs) (laughs) um there are times when I then I that I do and I focus on it (laughs) um but most of the time I think it's because I spend a lot of time being still and quiet Mm -hmm. um in my life and I live somewhere that's quiet um that I don't I don't find I need to into that space of meditation that often in order to be able to enter into just being present. Mm -hmm. I focus more on being present, which is, you know, why I said to you before that I've got an absolute terrible memory because I'm so sort of in the moment that I can't, I can't really go back and I can't really go forward. I'm just here right now. (laughs) Well, that sounds like a a daily meditation practice to me. It's just, you don't have to sit on the the cushion necessarily to do it. It's just in how you live. And that, I think that that speaks a lot to, I I mean, the way of life that you're, that you're speaking to, that's really, that's very powerful. Um, And my friend, my friend Winter, who's here, hi Winter, said, (laughs) is helping me out here too. She said, isn't communicating a meditation in itself? It is, it is. You're becoming present, you know. Absolutely. So um, 
for me, the most important element really uh, probably is the breath mm-hmm. and the intention and the love. Mm-hmm. And when you have those, those elements, then I don't need to sit like this, you know, going, I'm going to meditate now because then I'm going to do communication. It's just much more fluid and, and natural than that. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Winter, too, for, for clarifying. We're glad to have you here. Um, you So this is a, a little bit of a pivot, but um, the symposium that I'm sure many, many of our viewers here also attended and our Dr. Bradshaw Gay spoke at um, a little while ago, you that recently ended an eight day for anyone who didn't attend. It's an eight day online summit that featured over 24 speakers and hundreds of listeners and participators from around the world. Um, and it was a symposium, uh, not a symposium, a summit on communicating with nature and interspecies communication. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about this P, what you might have learned from it, any reflections on you, that you have on the experience after the fact? Yeah, so so let's backtrack just a little bit um, so that I can explain why it happened. Yeah. Um, we, so we went into lockdown in 2020, mm-hmm. and I thought, crikey, what now? So I asked the Animal Kingdom, how can I best be of service to you? And they said, well, we need to um, connect with people. And we want to connect with a lot of people. And what came out of that conversation with them was um, the Global Transformation Series that I did, Mm. which was eight species over eight weeks. And it was to do with the infinity sign. Um, That was their direction. And each week a different species came forward. And I did a live communication um, on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, which I have to say was the scariest thing to do. Um, but what I have found is that um, I'm asked to do something and it's always now I recognise a way of just, you know, getting me to expand my comfort zone just a bit more and obviously the animal kingdom think that I'm ready for it. Um, so after, you know, you get over your own fear, you just do it. And the global transformation reached um, about 40,000 people a week. So that was a great reach for the animals. Mm-hmm. And then that morphed into my membership, the Pride. So now a different species comes forward every month with my Pride membership. And they decide who's coming to speak. And it's very timely. And it's really what humans need to hear at that time and what the animals wish to express and what what messages they have for us and what they want us to hear. Mm -hmm. And then after that happened, at the end of 2020, I said, you know, what would you like me to do now? You have to be very careful when you ask this question. (laughs) And they said, well, we need something bigger. We need something huge. And I said, well, what does that look like? And after more conversation, the the summit came. So an online event and called Conversations with Nature because they were very clear they didn't want to keep it just on animals. They wanted to broaden it out and they wanted to bring in all of these different elements to create interconnection, you know, visually interconnection so that we could you know take that into our hearts and so each year the animals told me what the themes were they wanted to focus on Um, Texas and I and the animals decided on the speakers that would be in the summit and I'd spend hours looking for people and just waiting for um, Texas or whoever to say yes or no you know to feel it and then this year they sort of up the ante essentially because this year they wanted to focus on revitalizing our relationship with nature Mm -hmm. through animal communication cosmic consciousness and energetic activism and Mm -hmm. I was like oh crikey (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and the word revitalize, you know, that took a while to settle on because I was like, what is it? What is it? What is it? Eventually I went, okay, this is the word that you wanted. It was so specific about that. And cosmic consciousness, I thought, I have no idea what that's all about. Okay, but I'm just going to trust because that's the essential element of animal communication. And, um, and then as the speakers started to be located and the animals, you know, agreed, then it started to become obvious um, what they were putting together. Um, and it's and it's been the most incredible experience, I think, this summit that's just gone that, that Gay was speaking in and, and Gay's your talk was beautiful. Um, and I know a lot of people have listened to you and some of them are here. Um, so we were talking a lot about sort of energetic activism being sacred activism and about having reverence and respect for all of life and recognizing that interconnectedness of life. And that also energetic activism is, it is active. It is about each individual in each, individual knowing that they have something to offer that they have something to give and that just the smallest thing like you know um relocating a, a snail on a path that is otherwise going to get trodden on just to the side you know the way that they're going don't don't put them the other side but the way that they're heading. <laughs> <laughs> to help them out you know and it's these little things that we can all do um out of that place of loving kindness that make a difference and to step away from the illusion basically of how the world is perceived that came up a lot you know um that our perception of what is reality what really is reality and to really look at consciousness and our own consciousness and that connection with all of life um, and to recognize that you know and science and quantum physics talk about this is that we are all made up of the same building blocks mm -hmm. and so once we start to recognize that it shifts our perspective of who we are and where we are on this planet because really there are no countries there are no borders that's just a, another perception that we've been you know fed mm -hmm. there's one beautiful planet mother earth Gaia, and all of us, species, with her and with the elements, trying to coexist together in harmony. Mm -hmm. And it is possible. I really do believe it's possible. And the animals say that it's impossible. And they're incredibly encouraging to, to us as humans um, to, to find the truth of who we are and they keep coming back to it and the whales talk about it a lot. Um, it reminds me of a story actually. I was um, in Hawaii and I was um, spending time with dolphins and whales and on their, through their free will, completely open in the ocean. And I got the news that a member of my family had just committed suicide. And I'm not saying this to depress anybody, but just to inform you, you know, I was like, why, why, why? And internally, I couldn't get these answers. So I asked a humpback whale, why, why did he do this? And the whale said, because he lost sight of love. And that's what it keeps coming back to all the time, that we are love, that love is everywhere, but to recognize that we are love. And there's one speaker um, that was in the summit called Blossom Goodchild, who um, channels um, Native American Indian called White Cloud, and they have a mantra which is... Um, now, let me get this right, otherwise she'll kill me. <laughs> I, am, I am the light. I am the truth. I am the love. I am. I think that's correct. And um, 
And that when you say that, it actually changes your DNA. It's like, it's like an energetic upgrade. And the more we can recognize that, you know, it's something I say a lot myself. If I feel like I'm really like gnarly, you know, that gnarly mm -hmm. internally, things aren't going well. I'm frustrated. Things are a little bit fractious. Um, I, I really can't stand feeling gnarly. I really don't like it. So I go back to this place of just remember, I am love. I am love. And it really does something with your energetic field. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Could you repeat the mantra for us? I'm going to type it into the chat for everybody too. Yeah, yeah. let me just check. I've got it right. I think <laughs> I am the light. I am the truth. I am the love. I am. And we have to be very careful every time we say I am because that becomes the core of us. Mm. So don't, I advise, I suggest, try not to say I'm bad at this mm. or I can't do that. You know, mm. I am terrible at cooking or I am terrible at swimming or whatever it is. Say I am learning to be an efficient swimmer mm. instead. You know, just really turn it around because, because words are energy and everything that we say Feel it feeds the field. And um, one of the other things that was really um, strong in the summit was about frequency, mm -hmm. vibration, and recognizing that we are that and that we feed that. And so do the animals. We mustn't forget that the animals are also energetic beings feeding the field. So, how they feel and whether they are able to live the life that feels innate to them also makes a big difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Uh, it's so inspiring to hear, hear you speak to all of this. Um, and I know you were hoping to lead a guided meditation before we uh, shift into the questions from the audience. Um, but before we do that, is there any, any final thoughts or comments that you'd like to share about uh, animal communication or our species, our, series uh title earth restoration and the evolution of human consciousness any final thoughts to share with our audience yeah thank you and what we could do olivia is we could do, go to q a and then if there's time we could we could finish with Absolutely. that because i can make it very short sure um, okay earth restoration I'm going to I'm going to express communications from different species of the animal kingdom as they come forward. And the first species is tiger. You have so much to learn, but we love you. Restore yourselves. Remember who you are. We don't need restoring. We are perfect. We live our lives. You have lost your way but there is time to make a change. We respect who you are. And we forgive everything. And um, Wombat is here as well. Um, one bat wants to talk about the human consciousness element of the series. I just don't understand why you can't wake up and just get on with it. There is so little time. We're running out of space. You take up everything. 
everything. Slow down. What's the rush? Just get out of your own way. Get out of your own way now. I'll leave, I'll leave it there. I'm being advised by Texas, leave it there. There might be a bit more later. <laughs> let, let those two land. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do have, that is a lot of, uh, uh, some beautiful wisdom to, to let settle. <laughs> um, thank you, P. Thank you for sharing that and for, for everything you've shared with us today. This has been an incredible conversation. Um, we really appreciate it. <laughs> We do have quite a few questions in the chat, so I will go through and read those out. And if anyone, as we're as we're reading these questions, has more to add, please feel free to type them in. Um, so we will start off with um, Julie. She says, "Do you think being vegetarian is important for being able to communicate with animals?" And Christine says that they were wondering about this as well. Yes, I do get asked this quite a lot. Um, you know, I was a uh, vegetarian for 37 years. Um, and then I've transitioned to vegan. What I, what I find the animals um, wish for is that we that we find our own path, that we can live with ourselves without shame. And to be really honest with ourselves, with where we are with that. Um, of course, animals do not like to suffer. They do not like to be exploited. They do not like to be seen as products. Um, but it's not even a but. I've held workshops where students have not been vegan or vegetarian and they have been able to communicate with a chicken. Mm. They've been able to communicate with cows. So it doesn't stop the communication from happening, but would the animal kingdom prefer us not to hurt them? Of course, mm -hmm. of course. But I, I also think that the frequency that we put into the field is so important. So if we are feeling personally I, uncomfortable with a certain way of living our lives, then let's, let us all individually make those changes mm -hmm. so that we are not feeding negativity and shame into the, into the field because there's such low, low frequencies. Beautiful. Um, Gail is wondering how do you discern Texas's voice from your voice or imagination? Okay, I've not been asked that before. What do you think, Tex? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for those who haven't met Texas before, he, you know, he's quite um, to the point and direct. There he is. <laughs> um, when he just said, well, it's easy. Um, the way to discern whether it's not you and it's a different species is that you learn there's a kind of different speed to it, there's a different tone to it. You might even get the feeling that's kind of external to you. Um, you might find that you're, um, for me, for me, the thought forms are my strongest pathway to receive communication because I spent 15 years in theatre essentially silent listening, listening to the actors, listening to the director, listening in order to cue. So I've had a, you know, quite a big training in listening to words. Mm -hmm. But you can really trust your body as well. You can really trust your body when you're receiving communication. You'll feel it and that gut knowing as well and all the other senses that um, you can receive the information but with Texas, you know, he he was in his physical body with me for 19 years and 
um, he's not stopped communicating since he left his physical body. And it's just like having him in the room. It's, it's very easy for me just to, to listen, listen, you know, and sometimes he'll stop me from talking and say, no, 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 don't say that, say this, or I want to say something. So it's really, there's no separation between us at all. Mm. And that's, that's, I think, what we're really aiming for, that remembrance that there is no separation. Okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And then we do have, have that comment from when during the chat isn't communicating a meditation in itself, <laughs> which I know we've covered anything to add on that. <laughs> um, our next question is from Kathleen. What is the process of meeting the animal? When you say meeting, um, do I understand that means communicating? Or what does Kathleen, meeting mean? If you'd like to clarify, um, go right ahead. Um, maybe, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, when you talk to whale or approach that. Okay, Kathleen's still not quite sure what that question is. When I'm meeting a whale, when I'm talking to a whale, if you're asking how do I communicate with a whale, it's essentially the same way I communicate with a fly or with Texas. It's mm -hmm. just from that place of intention, respect, love, um, and from you know the recognizing that we are equals, the whale and the I. Um, and that just because the whale is in the ocean and I'm on the land does not mean that we can't have a, an exchange uh, communication together. Absolutely. Kathleen is also wondering, are there recordings of the speakers at the symposium? Are there what, sorry, recordings? Recordings of the speakers from the symposium. From the summit, yeah. Um, Yes, I mean, if you would like to, the, the All Access Pass has closed now for sale, but if you would like to, to listen to all the speakers, um, what I suggest is that you join the waitlist for the Pride membership, which you can do on my website, because the next time the Pride opens, you can become a full member of the Pride and you can then access the summit replays that way. Wonderful. Um, some people are just sharing some personal experiences. Monica shared their experience at the summit. Um, lots of lots of love in in the chat. Um, Anna is wondering. Please tell us how to teach animal communication to children, especially ones who have suffered traumas and are disconnected with many parts of themselves. Therefore, have learning difficulties and diagnosed with mental illnesses. Thank you. Uh, I don't actually have any experience of that, uh, my love. So I couldn't really, I couldn't really answer you on that. I had um, held workshops for children but not children who've had, who've suffered any traumas or uh, have mental illnesses. So I'm not sure whether I, I have that experience that I could give you the right advice. Mm. Sorry. Do you want to share any experiences of working with children in, in a broader sense? Yeah, of course. So, so when I hold workshops with children, I also invite one of their um, parentals uh, adults to join them so that they can share in the experience together and also then the child has a support system when they leave the workshop space to talk about any experiences they had and and other things that you know start happening after and with children you know I've heard girls and boys um, the children are fantastic you know they they haven't learned about separation yet they are right in there communicating with the animals straight away and they're wondering why their adult isn't <laughs> um they're also a lot of fun because you know they race around the room they do cartwheels because they're so excited <laughs> but they're in this space where it's like 
you're allowed to communicate with animals and I'm not the only one and there's all these other people communicating with animals <laughs> and they just have the best time and we sit on the floor and we talk about how much we love animals and then we talk to an animal and then we share what we had and yeah I mean the, the children workshops are a lot of fun <laughs> I love, I love teaching them because I love, you know, giving them, giving children who are naturally connected and have supportive parentals mm -hmm. um, that space where they can come to normalize it because it is natural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. That, that sounds, they sound incredible. <laughs> um, Monica is wondering, would you say it matters to discern from your own inner voice or if you're channeling an animal message, since we are all source and interconnected. Who asked that question? Let me just go and have a look at it. Would it matter? Monica. Yeah, I think Monica it always matters where you're receiving the communication from. I think it's I think it's good to identify the difference between, you know, whether it's me or whether it's Texas or whether it's the whale or the fly. And uh, so um, if you're unsure where the message is coming from, ask, ask, who is this? Who is this giving me this message? Absolutely. Mike is wondering, um, animals and the earth talk to us, but do we listen? Does our leadership listen and make a new direction, a new priority globally? I think we have to stop thinking that we're powerless beings and realize that when we come from the heart, from a place of truth, we have a lot of power as beings. And the more we speak about what is our truth, it will enable others to speak about what is their truth. And then we we'll come together as a larger community across the world and realize there are a lot of people thinking the same way and a lot of people recognize the interconnectedness of life and want change. And that's where we will start to influence. It's from the ground up. It's from the individuals coming together as a community and not giving our power over to those who um, say that they're in power. We can all be leaders if we have a self-belief and a passion for something and are able to share that um, from our heart space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Laura is, um, I think Laura is responding or elaborating to a previous question, <clears throat> but they're wondering, do you start, <clears throat> excuse me, do you start right in with the questions or do you greet and just listen for a while to what they want to say? No, it depends who I'm communicating with. Um, sometimes uh, if I'm out and about, animals will just start communicating with me because, of course, they can instigate it too. It's not something that we, that only we can do, <laughs> that only we can begin. Um, but if I'm working with clients, animals, then, you know, of course, you know, just imagine you're meeting a new human being for the first time. Um, you don't start by saying, so you know that terrible trauma that you had, can you tell me about that? <laughs> you know, you can, hi, how are you? You start a rapport, you let them know why you're there, you you know, you share your love with them. And, um, and I find the soft, gentle approach is always the way to go. You know, that's what I would love as a, someone approaching me and so I find I'm very receptive to anybody that's soft and gentle. Um, and the animals welcome that too. So, yeah, don't just dive in. Um, do a sort of, you know, soft, sweet meet and greet first. And also don't just end it and kind of just like walk away. Mm -hmm. I, thank them. Thank for them for their time, for what they've shared with you, for anything that's been difficult for them you know acknowledge it and just say how grateful you are that they've communicated with you during that moment and that maybe it would be great to communicate again at another time mm 
Yeah. Wonderful. That looks like, oh, um, okay, yes. So that was a, <laughs> Laura clarified what Kathleen was wondering. So that is, that is all the questions that are in the chat. Would anyone um, else like to ask anything? Looks like Brett would. Um, please, could you share with us all the different ways that you receive messages from the animals? Is it only the voice, feelings, or images? No, I mean, I... I receive through all the five senses plus the the gut knowing. Um, my, you know, my strength is the thought forms because, as I explained, my fifteen years in theatre listening. But I also I also feel uh, the emotions. I feel the physical sensations. I get drawn um, with my third eye to different areas of an animal's body as they're showing me an imbalance and taste and smells as well. Um, yeah, all, all of them. But I guess I always go back to, I start, I think, with the thought forms because that's naturally the easiest for me. But the others will filter in as I'm receiving different layers of information and, you know, a, a bigger picture and, also, depending on how the animal wishes to communicate with me and how they wish to, you know, deliver information to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, one of our Karulos <laughs> folks are wondering, do you find BC-specific nuances in the way they communicate? Also, has there been a message or conversation you've had that was the most memorable? Um, species specific nuances. Mm -hmm. No, it's no individuals have nuances within species. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to remember that you know, not all human beings are the same, therefore, not all cats are the same. Everybody that lives with a cat will know that, you know, not all dogs are the same. Um, so it really comes down to the individual, of course. What does happen is uh, sometimes um, a species will talk about what's, they'll communicate from that place that they have knowledge of. So, you know, their world, how they, co they exist on the planet, their day-to-day -day activities, what they eat, where they like to sleep and all those things can be a bit more species specific. But I always approach every um animal as an individual and I'm curious about who they are and what they wish to share or what I can learn from them um memorable conversations I mean god how long have you got <laughs> <laughs> um let me think of one okay the one that comes that needs to be shared is actually one with Morgan um so when I was starting out and I was very much learning and I'm still learning, I don't, it never stops. I'm still expanding. I'm a completely different person now than I was when I began uh, 17 years ago. But with Morgan, so Morgan was a um, Beagle Cross dog, my first dog, and I'd been walking him and then he'd run away from me and he ran into the road and it's quite a fast road. And I was like, oh, my God, running out, grabbing him, pulling to the side. What are you doing? A few days go by and he heads off again. He runs into the middle of the road again. And I'm the same thing. It's like, oh, my God, come on, come on. Why are you doing this? You know, um, I can't believe you're doing this. I wasn't listening. I was just saying, you know, don't do this. It's dangerous. And then he did it a third time. Um, and the th and I was I was that was a scary time because I was literally like stop because there was a car coming right close to him, and I just put myself between me and the um, the car, as you do, um, I don't know, as I do anyone. <laughs> and I got him to the side, and I was a little bit shaken because it was so close. And this time I asked the right question, which is I asked him, "Why are you doing this?" And I 
stopped and I listened. And he he told me, um, you didn't ask me. And what he was referring to is that um, I was going away on holiday and I hadn't thought to consult him at all on what his desire or opinion might be about what happened to him while I was away. So I'd made arrangements, but without considering him at all, um, which I'm completely, you know, uh, regretful of now. But it was a good learning experience um, because I've never done that since. Mm. And, um, and what does happen is that sometimes the animals will teach in very tough ways and what I've also found that animals with animal communicators that are, this is, you know, their role and why they're here on the earth at this time, animals will go to great lengths to, to teach us. Um, thankfully, he was fine after that and he never did that again because I listened. I, I always listen from then on. It's beautiful. Oh, incredible. What a message. Um, would anyone else like to ask any questions or share any comments before we move into the guided meditation and or the, the wrap up for today? Does anybody want to ask Texas a question? I'll ask a question and either of you can answer. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, that this is, you know, now kind of opening up um, or bringing into consciousness this two-way conversation um, and, and listening to other non-humans. Is there some things that humans need to stop saying in other words that the animals and plants don't want to hear yeah stop saying anything that um creates a negativity within your own energy field and within the world it's not helpful find another way of communicating Come from a place of love in every response that you give out. This will accelerate consciousness faster than you can ever imagine. Texas. Thank you. He is wondering in the chat, how do you deal with the pain and the suffering of animals in our world? Um. I, I honor it. I don't, um, I don't turn away from it. I feel personally with what I do, it's important that I am aware of what other animals are experiencing and don't put my head in the sand. Um, and I find ways to, um, bring myself back into balance and you know it there are various ways that we can all do this you know I'll um I'll lie down on the grass I'll sit up next to a tree I'll hug a tree I'll go for a walk in a forest I'll play with my dog I'll let my cat lie on me and purr into my heart space because they wish to do that and heal me. I'll have a shower. Very good. Let it all go. <laughs> <laughs> um, crystals, you know, um, I'll enter into communication with animals in order to um, reach a deeper understanding and way forward. There are lots of different ways I... I manage my emotions um, with the suffering. But the most important thing is I, I don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. I don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems very, very important, critical. Um, Mandy is wondering what message would Texas most like to communicate with us here today? Sending that is the that best week. question, Mandy, of the whole <laughs> session. <laughs> Well done, Mandy. Okay, <laughs> brilliant question. Um, all right, what message would you most like to communicate with everyone here today? Okay, 
he wants me to hold him. Um, Don't be afraid to love large. You are all beautiful, heart-centered beings, and I'm so delighted to be here with you. Put on your brave pants. Be loving, be kind, be compassionate. We need you. We love you. And um, he's now uh, representing the whole of the animal kingdom who are communicating that they're here with you. They're aware of what you're doing. They're aware of how you've come to this space and they respect that you're here and that you're listening and that you care. And they acknowledge you. Thank you, Mandy, for asking. Thank you so much. I really feel that we were all bathed in love. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm. Okay. Um, can, I interject, can I interject something? Yes, go for it, Ray. <laughs> well, I know I'm sitting here. Uh, I am so, first of all, honored to hear you talking about this stuff at this time with Living One and with everybody else because... Uh, because I went through it in 1985, and uh, our elephants were dying. I was taking care of elephants at the Wild Animal Park. They were dying, and we didn't figure out why they were dying. Even though we liked them, they liked us. We all got along, and so we contacted with the lady, uh, Samantha Curry, and uh, she's out of San Diego, and she had a reputation of being able to talk to animals. And we looked like we were all nuts because it made news, it was on the front page of the reader in San Diego, that we brought in a quote unquote, animal communicator whisper to find out why they were dying. And uh, I didn't believe it, none of us believed it. You know, We were trained that animals listened to us and we didn't listen to them. And boy, did she wake us up. Everything changed and we went through, everybody knows this, I'm not gonna go into it. We went through a death rite, we dug up animals, we went through it because they were grieving but we didn't hear them because they had to listen to us. Whether they liked it or not, they had to, that's how you're trained. And after that, we started listening to them and it opened up a whole different world. It made our job easier. We went to work and we just listened to the elephants. You know, we would actually bring them in and ask them, you know, where's the dirt today? And they would take their trunk and drag us around, it hurts here. But that was not how we were trained. So it's such an honor to hear you speak now and let everybody hear you because we got, you have no idea what we went through and how much mocking we went through, but it worked out. And Sam and I are still good friends. I just talked to her a few months ago and she still has a reputation and she's written books and she knows what she's doing. And she opened us to portals that we had blocked. It's the best way to put it. That's how we were trained. You listen to us. We're not going to listen to you and you're going to follow what we want you to do instead of what you may not want to do that day like doing rides every day. So it opened up to everything. It changed us. So it's really cool to listen to you talk. And I'm honored thank to hear you, you talk. Thank and you uh, thank so you. Thank you so much, Ray. And it's so great that you contributed that because things are changing, right? There's an awful lot of change happening since 1985. You should be teaching your class at every school, Moore Park College, all the ones that train people to take care of captive animals, okay? And you should be teaching there, or at least your classes should be taught there. Whether it's on Zoom or something, they should hear your voice and other people's voices because they don't get it, even though they feel it. And they look at you going, I remember doing rides with elephants. And they would look at me going, do you think they're happy? <laughs> well, why don't well, you ask all, them? I tell you what, let's just all hold the intention now 
that interspecies communication gets on the syllabus. Yes, I agree. I agree. That it's taught everywhere in every I agree. School. So thanks for your voice. <laughs> thanks, Ray. Thanks so much. Thank you for sharing, Ray. Um, all right, it looks like our last question from the chat is, do we need to ask a tree permission to hug it? <laughs> ask a <the> tree. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, ask the tree. If you feel like you need to ask the tree to, whether you can hug it, ask the tree. Um, I generally don't ask the trees, can I hug you? Because they love being hugged. They love being hugged. <laughs> Beautiful. If in doubt, ask whatever the, the species, whatever the energy is. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, P. Well, would you like to share a, a guided meditation before we close? Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> all right, Margaret. Um, so if you can all think of an animal, I'll keep it to animals because the title of my talk is Animal Communication. If you want to branch out, that's fine. Um, think of an animal that you'd like to communicate with and just share space with, or a species like the elephants. And then um, close your eyes again, feet on the floor, relax your hands in your lap. And try to recall what they look like. And have the intention that they are right in front of you. Picture them as best you can. And internally say to them, I would love to communicate with you. And use their name if you know their name. I would love to communicate with you. And beam a love from your heart. So have the intention of a beam of light emitting softly from your heart over to the animal in front of you. And this can be any color that you like, whatever resonates in this moment. And this beam of light is welcomed and accepted by them, connecting you heart to heart. And begin with, I love you. I love you. I respect you. I honor you. Find the words that resonate with you. And relax. Focus on being present right now in this moment. You and the animal in front of you. And look into their eyes or their eye or their face. Softly gazing at their face. Being present. Whenever you find your mind wandering, just bring it right back. And feel yourself back into the present moment with a breath in and an exhale. And continue to look softly towards your animal friend and their face. And take this moment to express to them with thoughts in your mind and with emotion what you feel about them.
remain present, gazing softly in the moment. And ask them, is there anything you would like me to know? Is there anything you would like me to know? You might receive that as a feeling within your body, emotion, sensation, thought form. You might see a picture with your mind's eye, even a little video clip. And now thank them for what they've shared. Thank them for being present with you. And know that you can communicate with them again at any point. Gently dissolve that beam of light connecting the two of you. Surround your friend in beautiful love, like a pink bubble of love. And then yourself in your own pink bubble of love. And then remind yourself of your connection with Earth. And then open your eyes. And if you'd like to, I invite you to put into the chat the species you connected with. And if it feels okay for you to share what you received as a message from them. Thank you so much, P, for for guiding us through that. That was beautiful, and for sharing your time with us here today as a whole. It's been an, it's been just wonderful having the time to talk with you and all of your wisdom and the way that you eloquently speak to this experience and this way of life is just transformative. So thank you so much for being here and for for sharing all of this with us. <laughs> you're you're so welcome. It's been an absolute honor to to be able to be here with everybody, to you know share my passion. So thank you for allowing me to do that. And um, um, it's always the biggest privilege to be a, a spokesperson for the animals. So thank you for that great honor, and thank you for everyone putting your your little bits of communication into the chat. I see that um, Sarah, you communicated with a turtle. Strong message, Kathleen, your dog. Um, these are really interesting communications you've been receiving. So, yeah, I love the blue whale communication. We are one. <laughs> Fabulous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone, for sharing and our audience for, for sharing your time with us today. It's, it's an honor to have you all here with us. Um, our next and final speaker in this series we are currently in will be a week from today on Friday, June 2nd at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. We will be joined by Dr. Freya Matthews and Mary Graham, Dr. Mary Graham, uh, in conversation to discuss an Australian consciousness. Uh, as always, if you enjoy Living One and feel called to support Carulo's Living One and all of our sanctuary residents, please consider donating at the link in our bio, carulos.org. And once again, P and our lovely audience, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your time with us. We're excited to see you again next week and hopefully in the future. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Lots of love. love.